going on? 2015 Express 3500. What size engine do we have? Um, it's a 4.8 okay. liter, I believe. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So we got um, we got a security issue. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So I have a like an on-site service company, and client called me yesterday, and it wasn't starting. They put a new battery in it. We went out there. The starter was bad, so we put a new starter in it. Um, but when my tech got out there, that security emblem was showing up on the dash. It wasn't blinking. It was just solid. Um, so we got the new starter in, and the vehicle started up, and then we went back this morning to try to clear that security uh, code off the dash. And, you know, we tried doing the thing where you put it in the on position for 10 minutes, and then a lot of times, from what I've read online, what my tech told me, that should clear it but it's not clearing it. We've tried that multiple times. We've tried disconnecting the battery for 30 minutes and doing it again. And now it's not turning over at all. Um, and that security emblem is staying solid on the dash. It's not blinking or anything, but we checked, you know, it's got fuel pressure. Um, it's, we checked all the fuses, the fuses seem good. Um, so we're just kind of trying to figure this out. We can't get the vehicle to start now. Have, have you tried using a different key, did you say? Yeah, we did try using a different key, too. We found the, we were using, like, a spare key at first, and then we got the key that has the, um, I think it has the chip in it because it had the plastic part with the GM emblem on it. Okay. <clears throat> have you checked for codes in the computer? Initially, yeah, but now our scanner is not connecting to it. Like it's not, it's not reading it. We have a pretty good scanner, like an Altel MX nine thousand or something, mm -hmm. and we can't get the we can't get the scanner to read anything like that. Okay, so if this is the case, we have a communication issue that this is what needs to be addressed before moving any before moving moving further. I would be willing to bet that the communication issue is likely causing the security problem or making it look like it's a security issue. So we need to get everything communicating first. So what we'll need to do is determine if the fuses are good, we're going to need to determine which module is modules are communicating and which modules are not communicating. So on this vehicle, obviously you've got many modules, but there's the BCM, the ECM, and you also have a the, the theft deterrent control module. So at the bare minimum, I would recommend to start by making sure that, you know, those modules are communicating. If, if it's just related to the ECM or the BCM, then what you have to do is go right to each module. Again, if this is if, if the fuses are good, we're going to check all the powers on the grounds, and then we'll, we would replace the module that you know as needed. But you might find a wiring issue. You know, for example, you might find there's no power either to the BCM or the ECM preventing it from waking up. Okay, to check the check the PCM and ECM. Make sure those are getting the appropriate power to them. Yeah, we'll make sure. Um, yeah, make sure they're communicating first. Yep. Okay. Okay. I guess we can go ahead and try that. <laughs> <clears throat> it's possible one of these modules have, have gone bad. You're sure the fuses are good? Yeah, my tech check checked the fuses. He says they're good. I can have him recheck them, but he's been okay. there for a few hours going out over everything. Okay. So it's also possible that, you know, we have a bad fuse block or a fuse box causing this issue. The battery doesn't drain overnight, does it? Um, it so he put a, they put a new battery in it yesterday. And then we went back this morning. And then after trying, you know, putting the key in the, 10 minutes, he might have done that a couple times, then the battery was dead. So he jumped the battery. Well, <clears throat> if the battery drains overnight, and this is a new battery, that could indicate one of these modules are staying powered up, or basically it's shorted out and it's not completely powering down. So just keep that in mind. But we'll, <clears throat> you know, let, let's find out which modules are communicating, which modules are not communicating. If there's none of them, well then, <laughs> We got a major issue on our hands. This is that's going to be a hands-on repair. I don't think we can fix fix that over the phone, but um, it'd be a little more advanced uh, testing strategies on the communication circuit. Okay. And I, I mean, my 
many tech will probably know this, but how do we test the BCM and the ECM to see if they're communicating? Do we just, um, is that something we can do with a, uh, what do we call a multimeter? Yeah, good question. So, um, uh, yes. So all you have to do, like I mentioned, all you have to do is just plug into the data link connector, turn the key on and attempt to communicate with each of these modules. That's all you have to do to, to start with. Okay, with the scanner? Yes, correct. That scanner should be capable of communicating with these modules. I think you was having trouble getting the scanner to connect at all. So it, it should ask you which module you want to communicate with. Um, and then at that point, you can go ahead and, um, you know, choose which one. So I would I would I recommend to double check to figure out which one is communicating or which one's not communicating. If they're again, if they're all not communicating with your scan tool, then we you know, we have a we have a major issue. And then that, at that point, we got to go after, you know, a little more hands on approach where it would probably require this thing getting towed to a shop or a mobile mechanic to come out. But. Um, let's just double check to make sure that all the modules, we find out which ones are communicating and which ones are not. But this Autel MX-9000 should should do the trick. Okay. All right, we can try that. And then if it's not communicating, that means that that module needs to be replaced. Well, that? then you have to check the powers on the ground going into the module before replacing it. Yeah, you never replace it. Just, you know, we got to check the powers on the grounds first. Okay. Okay. Well, we will try that. Yeah. So, like, if you let's let's just pretend that um, you know the ECM isn't isn't powered up. To check the powers, you know, you're going to be doing you're actually going to be back probing the connector, and you know all the powers on the grounds need to be checked with a that and that part is done with a voltmeter. All right. So we again we back probe the connector, and I can get you a pinout chart but we don't even know which module is, you know, if it's just the ECM or if it's just the BCM at this point, that's why we have to isolate it first. It would take me forever to, to grab all the pinout charts of the ECM, the theft deterrent module, the body control module. And this thing's probably just loaded with, with modules. So I, there's no way I could do that. So we have to figure out first, which module isn't communicating and go from there. Okay. Okay. Could it be uh I was just looking around online. Could it be a bad immobilizer sensor? Um, the, the like the theft deterrent module. Yeah. Yeah, it could be. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I'll give my tech a call. He's on site there with the scanner, so I'll have him test those modules um, and see if any of those are not responding. That's perfect. That, that that's going to be the first step, and then from there we can figure out you know, check the powers on the grounds. <clears throat> Hopefully he can isolate it. That's the idea right now is we isolate which module is communicating, which module is not communicating. Um, and then we can go right after the, either the ECM, the BCM or the theft deterrent module. Okay, I All right. You, Adam, you will try. Sounds good. Good luck and let me know. Okay. All right. Thanks. Will do. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Okay.